Hello, my name is Jane Cavolida, and I've been a teacher and a teacher trainer for many years. Two things that I've become convinced of over the years is firstly that extensive reading is key to language learning. And secondly, that graded readers are very useful stepping stones to reading um, authentic texts in a language. But today I want to go down a different road. And that is I want to look at how we can combine this with children learning about the world they live in. In particular, learning some of the targets of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. First of all, we need to know where we can find these. Uh, and then I'd like to say a few words about why I think that extensive reading lends itself so well to exploring them. So, uh, if for those who, of you who, who don't know, if you put this, um, this URL into your search engine, this um, web page will come up where the, uh, the sustainable development goals are in little squares, little colored squares, there's 17 of them. And uh, to get more information on them and to find out what the targets are, you click on one of the squares that you're interested in. So in this case, goal one, no poverty. And then you see where it says more information. If you click on that, another page will come up where you get um, the targets and indicators. Click on the targets and indicators and you will get the specific targets for that sustainable development goal. Why do I think extensive reading lends itself so well to exploring these? Well, because it's extensive reading, it means that the children engage with the text for longer and on a deeper level, which means that they can open their horizons to, to learning new things, and also that they can put themselves in the shoes of other children from around the world. So, um, I want to look at two, at two different uh, uh, sustainable development goals. The first is number 15, life on land, target five of that. And then we're going to look at quality education, target seven. So life on land, target 15, basically is saying we need to learn to share our world with the plants and the animals whose natural habitats are where we live and that we need to prevent their ex the extinction of uh, species uh, which are becoming extinct because of our behavior. So um, I want to use the example of bees, which as you know, not only give us honey, but are very important pollinators. And some of the species are indeed in, in danger of extinction. I want to suggest to you a, a, like a, a framework that you can use when you're working with, um, with sustainable development goals. So it's like the ABC, but the other way around. <laughs> so the CBA, the C is create interest. Then uh, build, so you find out what children know already and you build on it. And then the third one is to take some kind of action, whether it's to find out more information or whether it's to do something practical. Okay, so we're going to take the example of the of the uh, of bees. So to create interest, there's this little story which is about an an alien and his robot who come to Earth and discover these beautiful little furry black and white striped creatures who they just think are, are adorable, and they think initially that maybe they're sweeties, but they meet two children who explain to them the importance of explain they're not sweeties, <laughs> they can sting you, but um, they explain to them why they're important, what they, what they add to, the, to our earth. And just as they're talking about the bees, a long rumble, 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 along come two, two tractors. And I'm not going to tell you how the adventure, how the, how the adventure uh, uh, goes on, but I will tell you that it involves the destruction of the bees' habitat and also 
um, the use of pesticides to kill bugs. And of course, bugs, bees are bugs too. So um, I'll let you discover that. Imagine the ending yourself or, or read the book. <laughs> okay, then, so we want to go to the net to be, to build. So the best way to find out what children already know is to ask them questions. And this is a B quiz with questions that the children will know the answer to some of them, but not to all of them. So they go through and answer the ones they can and wonder about the ones they don't. Uh, I want you, I'm going to leave that so you, we're not going to do it now because we don't have time. But if you want to take a photo of it, you can maybe do it with your children. And here are the answers. So um, these are the answers. So you can use those with your children or you can, maybe there's something that you will learn about bees. <laughs> okay, so then we come to the, to the A, take action. Uh, and what I've done is I've made a little video with three very practical ideas of what we can do to give bees a hand and to help them not to become extinct, help them to continue to live alongside us in, in, in our world. So uh, first of all, uh, you, can, you can build a bee garden, you can make a bee garden. It doesn't necessarily, you can see that here there are, there are lots of pots with, with flowers in them. So you don't have to have a big garden. You can actually make just in a, you can make a bee garden in a, in a flower pot. Look on the internet and find which ones they like. Here you can see a bumblebee enjoying the, enjoying the flowers. Here's there's some more flowers here that are bee friendly. And then here, can you see here, there's what is called a bee bath. It's very simple to make. You take a bowl or a plate that's got a rim on it and you put in some stones and pour in some water, but the water shouldn't cover. Oh, do you see there's a bee just taken off there? The, 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 the water doesn't cover the stones, so the bees can land on the, on the stones and drink the water. And here is a bee hotel. Now, a bee hotel is made by taking cardboard and rolling it around a pencil so that you get rolls. And these rolls you put into a plastic bottle that you cut the top off. So you put all the rolls inside the plastic bottle and there you have your bee hotel where bees can rest when they're buzzing around your garden and they want to have a rest. Make sure you put it in a sunny place with lots of flowers around it. And there you have a, a, a bee hotel and you'll have lots of happy customers. Okay, so um, older children often really enjoy documentaries or in this case, it's documentaries with a story incorporated. So um, again, there is, again there, there, these documentaries are about ecological, ecological um, issues. Um, so how can they engage with the topic? So I'm thinking now when they've finished, when you finish reading, you finish doing all the, all the language work, the comprehension work, how can you get the children to really engage with the topic, which in this case is deforestation, the importance of forests, the beauty of forests and the danger of deforestation? Well, you can get them to write a song or a poem about the, about the topic, or you can get them to bring in some music that makes you think of the topic. So in the case of forests, you could get them to bring in some really um, some really exotic jungle, jungle type music for the jungle, and then maybe some eerie music for the for the um, for the forests up in the up in the Arctic Circle, which are covered in snow and and where the animals all have a very hard time living. Or you could maybe something more jolly for the for um, for forests in um, in temporal temperate cl uh, uh, climes. So you can you can get them to think of to think of the different atmospheres of the forest and the different places, and get them to bring in some of the music that they love, which they think is related to those to those to those forests. Then you can get them to prepare a presentation. Presentations are, are very important and I think underestimated in a lot of our classes. You know, you think that people have to make presentations all their lives. Like, I mean, I'm making a presentation now, which probably not, not, not so many people have to do. But 
you think of it in your job, in your classroom, you ask the children to make presentations, but also in almost every job, you, you do have to make, you do have to stand up and present something to other people. So it's a good way, it's very good to start this at school so that it takes the fear out of it. So they can make a presentation, maybe about a wood or a forest near, near where they live, the animals that live there, the, the, the plants and the dangers that the, that the forest faces. Some children are very good at art, so you can you can get them to design something, a T-shirt or an umbrella, where they put a slogan and a, and a picture related to the topic. Or they can design a, a billboard for a film with a, with a picture, they can make up a title, they can even put the actors and the actresses who they'd like to be in their movie. All right, let's move on to the other um, the other uh, uh, sustainable development goal now, uh, sustainable uh, the number four, quality education, and we're looking at target seven, which is something I think which is close to the hearts of all teachers, which is to, to try to develop in our children uh, an appreciation of other cultures and a tolerance of other cultures. And really intolerance comes from not understanding. So if we can get the children to put their feet into the shoes of a child from another part of the world and then, and know that the very the similarities between the similarities between them and the and the other children it's a big step towards uh, tolerance in the world so ellie has this very beautiful series called the real live series uh, which follows the life of children in different parts of the world their everyday life, their, their favorite sports, their food, their, you know, what, 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 what's important in their lives. And then there's another, another series which is for, is for teens, so the same, with the same idea. So what can you do with these? Well, firstly, this is a very important activity. I sometimes think that you know, there's quite a few politicians who could do with this activity, where you have to distinguish between what is a fact and what is an opinion. So, um, in this case, for example, Ivan, Ivan lives in St. Petersburg. It's a fact, he does. He has a very nice family. That's my opinion. He has a lovely family. So, you know, this is, is getting children to see what's fact and what's opinion. And that's important for, the, for, the, for, for attitudes to other, to other cultures. What is actually a fact and what is what people say? Okay, then sharing your everyday life. So here we have a, a typical, um, a typical uh, questionnaire that children do all the time in primary. What sort of sports do you love? What's your favorite subject? What do you have for lunch? You know, how many brothers and sisters have you got? But for, in this case, they're doing it for a purpose because then they're going to compare themselves with even who they've also learned all these things about. Here, um, write a dialogue between you and a character or a phone conversation or an online chat. And this case is about passions because these two girls are passionate about playing the piano. So the children can make a dialogue in which one of them talks about their passion playing on the piano because they take on the role of this child, or one of these girls. And then the other child can talk about their passions. So. They're sharing their passions, but they're also sharing their passions with someone from a different country. So, and here, where the, where the, um, the cultures are very different. So I'm thinking maybe of Spain and Uganda, which are very different, have very different cultures. You know, it's very easy to, to, to think that the culture is actually more different than it is. So if you can do an activity like this, where you say, all right, so, what is true for me and for this little girl Nyangoma in Uganda? What's true for Nyangoma but isn't true for me? And what's true for me but isn't for Nyangoma? So you can get them to compare and see what, what's similar and what's different. And probably what they'll find is there's more things which are similar than they expected. This is another activity. Could this story happen in your country? The story is about a little girl on the way to school, who comes across a snake? She gets such a shock that she she jumps, and her and her lunch, which she carries in a little plastic 
uh, box to school, goes flying everywhere, all over her clothes and the ground. And then some friends come along and help to clean up her clothes and they share their food with her. So could that happen in your country? Could you, could you meet a snake on the way to school? Uh, do you carry your, your food to school in a, little, in a little box? So, and they can retell the story. So a, an instant on the way to school and somebody coming along and helping using a setting and characters from their own country. So they can see how the, the setting might be different. The situation, the, 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 the characters might be different, but the situation could be very, it could be the same. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this this short video. Uh, all the the um, the readers that I've mentioned are all Ellie readers, and this is where you can find the 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 audio and the video files for them. And here's this is the guide for this is the 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 Ellie uh, graded readers guide for teachers, which not doesn't just have the readers; it also has ideas for teachers. And if you want to get in contact with them, this is where you do it. Well, thank you very much. I hope I'll be you'll be around to ask me some questions on the on the question and answer session. And otherwise, I hope you very, very much enjoy the conference. Bye bye.